Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Dave White uh, with Loom Textiles and very happy to have Suzanne Tick joining us this morning. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, Dave. Hey, so uh, I'm actually very excited about this talk because uh, in speaking to you about it, I know this is talking about how during the pandemic, so many of us, it really forced us to, to take a step back and sort of reevaluate things and to come to a better, I guess, to reevaluate and understand what our priorities and values are. And I think the interesting thing that you were mentioning is what you want to talk about this morning is how the techniques of Vedic meditation um, can uh, are tied somewhat to the world of unbounded color choices. Like one of the one of the 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 challenges I think today for for most of us working remotely is we need to use tools that are faster and easier, like like online tools. But the issue is the colors never right. Like I could pick some multicolor from this line and another solid from Loom, but uh, you know, it's you just uh, digital color representation is so tough. So it's sort of an interest. There's an interesting tie-in with all of this. So with that, let me let me turn it over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to be here firsthand to see um, our color wall, which I'm really excited to be sitting in front of. But um, this talk is really about how we explored uh, the concept of de excitation and how that really brought a whole other reference point to us um, in the work that we do. And um, so here at Tick Studio, we're a bunch of um, Vedic meditators, which means we actually um, have a 20 minute practice in the morning and in the afternoon. And actually you can come online if you'd like at 4.30 um, weekdays. But um, we, um, what, what we've learned that the first thing um, in order to create abundance and um, have your kind of yourself rooted in your you know true being is to sit for 20 minutes and de-excite your nervous system and and it really works and it um, it's an easy practice it's simple and natural and easy and um, what it allows you to do is to um, unstress at a molecular level any stressors that have been kind of you've been in encoded um, from birth with and that allows you to um, raise your consciousness level so it's really what we're trying to do um, with our meditation practice is to tap into our full potential of in creative creative intelligence and we all have it it's just we have a, a problem getting to it because we become too stressed and can't find that spot and once you can do that your reaction to everything um, is um, with relevance and grace. And that's what we're trying to do. And so during the um, COVID, it really allowed us to build our practice even more strongly and um, experience less friction in our lives. And um, it really allowed us to help determine what we needed for the brand. And, you know, create that abundance that we're talking about. So um, the color um, wall that is behind me really um, represents the field, the unified field to us. And and the unified field is all around us. You know, it's, it's, um, it's something that when you start meditating, some people when they close their eyes and they dig deep into their meditation practice, um, this is what you visualize. And you don't even know what you're visualizing because it's in all of us, which is really the unified field. And it's um, this practice, with, it's a mantra-based practice. It allows you to um, drop deep into the space beyond um where nature resides and it's it really works it's crazy i don't want to sound too woo woo but it actually really works and the more that we can tap into that space um the more times we merge our true nature kind of our individuality with uh universality and um and that's the sweet spot that's where we want to go and so it's a twice a day practice and it looks kind of like this. This is um, this is a class that I did um, called a rounding um, weekend rounding class where um, meditators came and we sat 
um, and we meditated and we did some rounds, which means we did asanas and different uh, different practice. And we continued to do that throughout the day. And the process of this meditation is really effortless. Um, and you sit innocently and comfortably. And, um, you know, we don't resist noise. We don't resist thoughts. We don't resist anything. Thoughts are actually the after effects of stress release. So it's great. Um, but it allows us to... Um, see all that's in front of us with clarity. And I think that that's what we saw when um, we started developing um, this color wall. So in India, one of the things that we talk about is that the metaphor of meditation is that you take a, a white cloth and you dip it in saffron. And then you lift that cloth out and you set it in the sun. And um, the sun um, fades the cloth. It just totally fades the cloth. So there's actually, after the first dyeing, very, very little color in it. And then in the afternoon, you dip the cloth again into the saffron, and then you bring it out, and you set it in the sun again. And it's slightly, ever so slightly darker. And this practice um, um, of dyeing cloth is the metaphor for our meditation. So the deeper you are, the more times you dip the cloth and set it out um, in the sun is the same concept of sitting in your meditation practice, coming out of your meditation practice, taking action in your everyday life. And as you have your everyday life, the feeling of the meditation practice starts to fade. And so the DX side, so you, you know, you get stressed actually from the morning to your afternoon practice. And so all of what you got out of your morning practice has faded away. And in your afternoon practice, you meditate again and you de-excite your system. And when you do this twice a day, every day, it's like dipping the cloth, and as you dip your the cloth, it gets deeper and richer and richer and richer until you're fully engaged in the nuance of how this meditation practice works. And, um, and you eventually get to the point where you merge with the universality, and the meditation practice in eyes open feels the same. And that's when the beauty starts happening. And that's when you start realizing the abundance of what life has to offer. So because of COVID and because we've all been meditating now, our team for almost two, I think our team has started meditating a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm going on my um, fifth year now that, has it been two years? It's been two, two years, I think for everybody, um, that now, um, it led us to think about um, writing a seat on color and also creating this color wall where we could actually sit back and look at this entire um, collection from a holistic point of view, which we would compare to the unified field. So for us, the unified field of this um, this collection, well, you're seeing it right here in the picture. I was going to say I can move the the um, screen around but you see our entire collection and um, and as product designers this is a perfect way for us to now establish what the need of the time is for not only the industry but for this collection because we look at this collection as a unified field of product development from solid colors to textures to patterns um, to multicolors, they're all embedded in this wall. And it's really, really important as product designers that we see our collection as a whole. So when we start to sit down to develop um, each of our collections, we do three a year, we look at what's happening in the world at large. What And, and what relevance can we bring to um, this design community? And what's really, really important, what was important to us this past year, which we started again, y'all, two years ago. Um, we developed our collection, you know, we start two years in advance. And 
Um, I believe because we've been so um, diligent with our practice that um, we could see the need of the time, which was going to be um, how we communicate and work together and partnering with, with our collection. Our collective conscious collection was really about relationships with um, our domestic partners. And, um, and also we had the first biodegradable material in the marketplace and Rare Earth, which will be launch, launching next week, the most exquisite, beautiful, elegant collection I think that we've done, although Collective Conscious was pretty good, <laughs> um, is really about um, looking at nature and understanding that nature is here for all of us. And, you know, life is here for us, um, happening for us, not to us. And um, when you start understanding and de-stress at, at this level, you really start understanding that um, your thoughts um, can become things. And so if you're um, in a repetitive, negative, destructive mode, you're going to attract negative, destructive things. If you're in um, a positive, creative mode, you're going to start attracting positive and creative things, and you're going to start seeing for us what the collection needs. And, you know, I said to Dave earlier today that I don't think that had we um, had we not started our practice, would we have taken on this, you know, thousand memos on our wall um, project? But we just were like, yeah, let's do it. Let's see what it looks like. And we can, you can really see how holistic our collections are. So as we build each collection from collective conscious to rare earth, then to um, our out, outdoors, our outside in, which is our collection for September, we add colors and we also integrate our palettes so the collections all work together. So if you pick something, a multicolor from our collection, it's gonna coordinate with so many things in our line. Um, this is an example of how we look at our collections. And we look from, you know, we could have a collection from five years ago work beautifully with what we're launching today and have it be nuanced by new colors that are just entering into the marketplace. So that's what we're doing. Um, you know, the, the thing that's critically important in um, understanding stress is that you really want to get rid of that chemistry in your body, which is called cortisol, which is that fight and flight mm -hmm. um, reactive um, energy that one has when you get angry and then you actually aren't in your senses at all when that takes over because you, I mean, it's there for a reason and it was there, you know, from the beginning of time, but we're not living in villages where tigers are going to come in and, you know, bite you. We're living in, in a world today. So what happens with people today is that people are so filled with cortisol that they, it's not that they get stressed, but they stay stressed and they stay stressed all day long. And that's what um, this practice does. Does. It allows the chemistry um, of cortisol to leave your body and get replaced by this really grounded dopamine um, and really what we, what we would call the bliss chemistry um, that one needs to de-excite your nervous system. Um, so if you get stressed, and I have to say, I get stressed. I, I mean, I got stressed yesterday and I was like, wow, I really feel stressed. But I knew that I, you know, that I was stressed and I'm like, well, I, I don't need to be upset by that. Like get, get over this. And immediately I kind of dropped it. And that's what it does it allows you to kind of get rid of that energy and you know by the second day or the second meditation of the day then you really really um, unstress that and get that out, out of your body all together because we don't want to accumulate stress that's the the purpose of that second practice of the day so the wall is here it's up to used if anybody wants to make an appointment to come um, this is a little collage that we did um, we're available, um, we're in the East Village in New York. Um, if you have projects that you're working on, it's great, come and visit us. Um, and um, we're, we'll keep this wall up um, as we develop more and more collections because we know the importance of um, 
of having collections that all work together in a holistic, abundant way. Um, so we're really excited about our color wall. Um, and we're really excited about our meditation. You can tap in at 4.30. You can look at it on our website, SuzanneTick.com. Um, and, um, and Loom knows all about it. And, you know, we're here to help you guys reach your full potential. That's what we're all here for. So join us anytime you want. And um, anyway, I don't know if we open for questions. I think we have three minutes. We're like up hard stop at 11:20 today but um yeah. type in if you have any questions thank you everybody who joined us we're always excited to um to share our knowledge with you Try well, to help. You we're and, out here you and i were talking about this beforehand suzanne that uh that i have definitely seen the benefits of this uh from the time that you started five years ago it's definitely definitely seemed to make a big difference in your life uh, um, wow. Yeah. Dave, I don't I don't snap at you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely noticed that. It's, and that's been a while. I mean, that's been I mean, it's just a different, as you said, it's a I thought the, the conversation about the cortisol and that, you know, that's a human reaction that that's been ingrained in us through evolution. You know, that's so so uh typical of a lot of things in our life, like like why people overeat. It's because it's a it's a reaction to when we didn't have enough food right so we have that a chemical <laughs> imbalance and that's yeah. what's so beautiful about this meditation practice it's easy to do the mantra just takes you down inside but it any imbalances that you have it like triggers the neuroplasticity of your brain and it and any imbalances that you have it just starts focusing them and you start realizing more and more it takes time though it's not a once and done that's why you do twice a day you know um yeah. but it's doable i mean i've seen oh gosh so much change you know and your relationships get better and you see things more clearly and you get smarter <laughs> i didn't think i could get, i just thought i was done um I, but you get I, more I, creative and you have more energy it's really Spectacular. I thought the saffron analogy was a really good way of explaining that. That was really good. Yeah. Makes because sense. Because you do feel by, by 4.30 in the afternoon, your morning meditation is kind of worn off. I mean, yeah. even after all the, you know, thousands of hours of meditation I've done, you know, I can still, I still need it, you know. Yeah. And we all, um, and it's just, it's a spectacular. And, you know, people, the thing is, is, you could get on that Instagram and eat up an hour and a half without even knowing it. And you're not benefiting because what you're doing is you're just pinging the, your, you know, anxiety and fear and, uh, and comparing yourself. And, you know, you create yeah. the duality by looking in, at that. We don't, we want to, we want to get rid of the duality and we want to bring us together with universality that we're all here together, you know, and yeah. we're all here together to, to you know allow ourselves to work with one another and be together in a really positive way you know that's an interesting so this yeah this is this is all i'm uh sorry and then we'll have to go i'm reading a book by a guy named uh bregman uh called humankind which is really interesting but he talks about the evolutions of humans and that that uh, Homo sapien it's a long story but Homo sapiens have thrived and survived because we are social. Uh, yeah. and he was talking about the fact that Neanderthals were actually had very large heads if we remember they were much bigger, much stronger, and had larger heads, but they weren't social beings so they didn't so learn socially right from the way that we do. So that interconnectedness is really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's anyway. I mean, that's what the practice does. It allows us to be aware of what's required for society and, and you know, be able to help when it's necessary. So we better anyway. go. Sarah okay. Pellegrin sent a very nice comment. Thank you, Sarah. We appreciate that. <laughs> All uh, right. So I think, think our time is up, Suzanne. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to see everybody. Um, okay. Anyway, join us whenever you want to. Bye, Dave. See you later. Talk to y'all later. See you, Suzanne. Bye.